Xavier Leggett was recently reported as one of the top offensive performers in spring practice throughout the college football landscape. So is it time to buy stock into the fifth-year receiver? You are Locked On Gamecocks, your daily podcast on the South Carolina Gamecocks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, Gamecock Nation, and welcome back to the Locked On Gamecocks podcast, your show for the latest headlines and potential storylines on South Carolina Gamecock athletics. I'm Andrew Lyon, the host of this podcast, and also a staff writer for Gamecocks Digest over on SI.com. Thank you for making Locked On Gamecocks your first watch or listen here today. We are free and available on YouTube and wherever you get your audio podcasts daily. Earlier this offseason, before the Gamecocks even started spring practice back in mid-March, we talked about on this show multiple players on the offensive side of the ball that the Gamecocks, in a perfect world, would probably like to see step up this next season in order for that side of the ball to be able to fully unlock its potential under new offensive coordinator Dow Loggins and obviously with Spencer Rattler and Antoine Juice Wells both coming back for another season here in Columbia. And one of those players that we talked about on the show was wide receiver Xavier Leggett. And based on the recent reporting by Matt Zenitz, one of on three's national college football reporters, it seems like that that could be something that indeed happens. As according to a report by Matt Zenitz from a couple days ago, Xavier Leggett was one of the 10 offensive spring standouts that was sort of relayed to him based on some of the intel he got from the program throughout this spring practice slate. And he's listed alongside other guys like quarterback Devin Leary at Kentucky, running back Trevor Etienne at Florida, and a bunch of other guys that are mainly SEC, but also a couple guys from out West as well. Now, when it comes to sort of how we should digest this information from Matt Zenitz on Xavier Leggett, here's what I'll say. While I've stated multiple times in the past that Xavier Leggett can be a big-time offensive weapon for Spencer Rattler and the Gamecocks, if I have to either buy stock or hold off in light of Matt's reporting, I would say that I would hold off for now in terms of buying stock on Xavier Leggett for this next season. And I want y'all to understand, when I make that statement, I'm not saying that Xavier Leggett does not have the potential to have a breakout 2023 season. Again, we've talked about that multiple times before, and I'll dive into what a breakout season could look like for him in just a little bit if it plays out that way. But here's the thing. We have heard this before regarding Xavier Leggett being a great practice player, how hard he works on the field, how much he gets after. And all of those traits are great. You want that with every single football player for South Carolina. But the thing is with Xavier Leggett, as we've also talked about, we have not seen all that hard work on the practice field fully carry over to the football field for an entire football season. We've seen glimpses of it, like the Gator Bowl against Notre Dame this past December, but for 12-13 games, we have not seen it consistently. And again, if South Carolina is going to reach its full potential on offense, they need a guy like Xavier Leggett to step up at that wide receiver position because they need a Robin for the Batman in their receiving core, which in this case is Antoine Juice Wells. And at this point, Xavier Leggett, you know, he hasn't had maybe too many opportunities until this past year, but this past year, he did post some new career highs. He had 18 receptions for 167 receiving yards and three touchdowns in 13 games. Now, granted, he got a lot of snaps last season. So when I name all of those stats off, That is probably something that a lot of fans would like to see increase substantially in each area, again, if we are expecting Xavier Leggett to be that second guy in that receiver core behind Juice Wells. So, what exactly could that look like? Well, I decided to keep this simple. 
I went back and looked at South Carolina's receiving stats from the 2022 season as a whole. Obviously, Antoine Juice Wells was by far the best statistically out of South Carolina's receiving core. The second best receiver out of the group was Jalen Brooks, who has obviously exhausted his eligibility and is now working towards a potential NFL career. Jalen Brooks finished the 2022 season with 33 receptions, 504 receiving yards, and one receiving touchdown in 12 games. Now, I will say, if we're going to strictly compare Jalen Brooks as a player and Xavier Leggett as a player, Xavier Leggett, in my opinion, is a better athlete and more physically built at that wide receiver spot compared to a Jalen Brooks. Jalen Brooks was more so of a grinder type wide receiver. You know, not necessarily a guy that maybe blew you away in any area really of his game. I mean, he did have great hands, but he had to work really hard in order to, you know, really get himself open and make plays happen. But Jalen Brooks, he made the most of his opportunities this past year. He had 30 receiving yards or more in nine of his 12 games last season. Xavier Leggett, again, not trying to pick on him, only had more than 10 receiving yards in three of his 13 game appearances this past fall. So, I'm obviously not trying to sit here and say again that Matt Zant's reporting is wrong or that it's false and it's not going to pan out that way. Again, please don't misconstrue what I'm saying here. I think that Xavier Leggett definitely possesses the potential to be one of the top offensive players on this South Carolina football team this upcoming fall. But if Xavier Leggett in this case was a stock and you were going to maybe put money down and either buy into this stock based on this recent report that's come out or you're going to maybe hold off for now, again, personally, I would just hold off because, again, it's easy for guys to be great on the practice field. You know, they talk about being a Super Bowl champion on air in certain cases. But when it comes to playing under the lights, you just got to be different. And again, I think Xavier really get can't be that guy. But right now, I do think that we need to, you know, just sort of keep our aspirations for his final season at South Carolina at bay at this current moment. Now, while Xavier Leggett had that report come out about sort of his spring performance just a couple days ago, there's been a lack of reporting regarding another offensive player that unfortunately went down with an injury in South Carolina's spring game. But an Instagram story may have potentially hinted at what his current status is right now. And of course, I'm talking about Jalen Nichols, and I'm going to dive into that in just a couple moments right here on Locked On Gamecocks. But first, today's show is brought to you by Built Bar. If you're somebody that is trying to get back in shape, maybe you're you're sick and tired of going through the same old routine in terms of, you know, maybe you're not eating the best of foods, you're not getting outside enough, or you're not going to the gym, and you're trying to change all that. Well, in terms of the food aspect, I would highly recommend that you go and try out Built Bar. Built Bar is a phenomenal protein bar that has got a multitude of things going for them. They're covered in 100% real chocolate. They're only 130 calories. They have 17 grams of protein, and if you're looking to avoid sugar, they got you covered there as well, as they only include 4 grams in their protein bars. Built Bar's also got a variety of flavors. They got bars like churro, banana cream pie, mint chocolate, coconut, cookie dough, you name it. They have got everything. Now, Built is available online at Built.com, but it's also now available at your local Walmart or Sam's Club. If you go to Walmart, you can grab a four-bar box in the pharmacy section. If you go to Sam's Club, you can grab a 13-bar box. If you want a specialty bar, be sure to go to their website again at Built.com. I promise you, you're going to thank me later because Built Bar is where tasty is the new healthy. Welcome back to this Wednesday edition of the Lockdown Gamecocks podcast, where we cover your South Carolina Gamecocks every single day. Lockdown's NFL Mock Draft Special is here, and it's bigger than ever before. 
Follow along all 32 teams' first pick in a six-episode Ultimate Mock Draft experience only Locked On can deliver. All episodes are available now on Locked On NFL Draft on YouTube and wherever you listen to your audio podcasts. Be sure to catch them now before the NFL Draft starts late Thursday night. All right, now let's get into this Instagram story that I alluded to before the break regarding Jalen Nichols, a offensive lineman that the Gamecocks are going to hope to heavily rely on in the 2023 season. To provide some quick context, Jalen Nichols went down in South Carolina spring game 10 days ago with what looked to be a potentially serious left knee injury. Now, there has been little to no reporting at all on this injury since this entire thing went down. There's been nothing released on Jalen Nichols' end. There's been nothing released on Shane Beamer's end. And anything that has been put out there has been put on subscription-based websites. So there's been no real free public knowledge to go off of regarding this entire deal, which has left fans perplexed as to what's the status on Jalen Nichols. Well, Jalen Nichols posted an Instagram story on Tuesday of sort of him checking out a new car that Juice Well seemed to get just a day or so ago. And this Instagram story, I'm going to play it for y'all real quick for those of you watching today's show on YouTube, and I'll describe it for those of you listening to today's show on an audio podcast app. But Jalen Nichols, he gets up next to the car. He sees Juice Wells get in the car, and then he walks around to the back. And the thing that sticks out to me right here is Jalen Nichols is not using crutches. He is walking on his own power. Now, admittedly, if you want to analyze this any deeper, Jalen Nichols does seem to have a little bit of a limp when he goes to his left side to take a step, which is the same, again, leg that he seemed to injure in the spring game. But I will say, the fact that he is walking on his own power, in my opinion, is an encouraging sign regarding his potential injury. Now, this does not mean that Jalen Nichols didn't tear anything in that left knee because you could partially tear a tendon or a ligament in your knee joint and be able to walk around on your own power after just a few days when the swelling has sort of gone down a little bit. Jalen Nichols could also, admittedly, still potentially be waiting to have a procedure done. But at the same time, if we're going to dive into this hypothetical real quick, if Jalen Nichols does indeed still need surgery for any reason, my follow-up question would be, why hasn't the procedure taken place yet? Because typically, when athletes at the collegiate level or the NFL level get this kind of injury... I would say that usually they do not have to wait any longer than, say, three, five days, maybe six days at the most, before having the operation done. And I'll remind y'all once again, I said it a couple minutes ago, it's now been 10 days since the spring game took place and since Jalen Nichols' injury, therefore, took place. So, there's a lot of questions to ask regarding this Instagram story, but again... If I was going to assume that if the injury was bad enough, he needed to have surgery done, it would have already happened by now, which would obviously mean he would probably not be walking on his own power. He would definitely be on crutches. That does, in my opinion, give Gamecock fans potentially a little bit of hope that maybe this injury is not as severe as we have been led to believe since everything went down. So. If he is able to come back, if it is not indeed a season-ending injury for Jalen Nichols, what would a good timeline look like for him? Well, if Jalen Nichols, say, needs a few months to come back from this injury, whatever the injury is, I would say that before this season, you would want him to be back by August 16th. The reason I picked that specific date is because that's halfway through fall camp, and it's a couple of days before the Gamecocks would likely play a second scrimmage in fall camp before they would begin to start prepping for their week one matchup on September 2nd against the North Carolina Tar Heels. The other thing is, I also believe Jalen Nichols is a fifth year player at this point, so unlike some of the other guys on this roster, 
I don't think Jalen Nichols needs to have an entire fall camp in terms of going through the playbook and everything. If anything, I think that he just needs a couple weeks to, again, get his feet back under him, get reacclimated to the physicality in those full contact drills with his teammates. Now, let's say Jalen Nichols does need to have a procedure done still, or the injury is severe enough that either way, he's going to miss time throughout the season. If he could still return, what would be the ideal time for returning in that hypothetical scenario? In my opinion, for that scenario, it would be October 7th, which would be the bye week for South Carolina, or October the 14th versus the Florida Gators. That would line up to be about six months right after this injury initially took place. So, this is again, all assuming that Jalen Nichols is not going to have a massive operation done for torn ligaments or anything of that nature, and he would be able to return. But I say again, we do not know that. I simply put out this video because I felt like that it was important for Gamecock fans to see this and see that potentially there is, again, a chance that Jalen Nichols might actually be able to play this season, and that, again, maybe the reports of the injury being potentially season-ending were a little bit overblown. But again, we haven't heard anything official yet on that front from either Jalen Nichols or Shane Beamer, and I'm sure that we're going to hear something in the very near future regarding all that to put all of these questions to rest. All right, now for the final portion of today's show, let's switch gears and talk about South Carolina's baseball team. Now, the Gamecocks do not have a midweek game this week as they're going to get a little bit of extra time off before they play their upcoming SEC opponent in the Auburn Tigers on Friday all the way through Sunday in your typical three-game series. But I wanted to talk about some postseason scenarios real quick because, in my opinion, the Gamecocks have already clinched a spot as a regional host in the NCAA regionals for this postseason. But I think the Gamecocks still need to do just a little bit more to fully lock up a potential top eight national seed for the postseason. Now, some of you who maybe don't watch baseball as much, you might be sitting there wondering, well, why is being a top eight national seed so important? And I'll answer that question real quickly. If you're a top eight national seed, let's say you go into the NCAA regionals, you take care of business, you win your regional, you don't get upset by anybody. If you're a top eight national seed, you would be, therefore, the host automatically of the Super Regional paired up with the other regional site. So if South Carolina was, say, an 8 seed, let's just say that they barely sneak in as a top 8 national seed, they would be paired up with the number 9 overall national seed, and if both the number 8 and number 9 national seeds won, then South Carolina in that scenario would be hosting for the Super Regional. South Carolina right now has lost one game in 25 games all season long in Founders Park. If you're South Carolina, you want to make sure that the potential road to Omaha is as easy as possible for yourselves. And if that's the case, then you got to make sure that you lock up a top eight national seat. So when looking at the remaining schedule here, South Carolina has three more midweek games that they're going to have to deal with where they're going to be playing at Winthrop versus North Florida and versus the Charlotte 49ers. None of these teams which really should scare South Carolina all that much. Definitely not on the level of an East Carolina or a Coastal Carolina, so to speak. The Gamecocks have four more SEC weekend series to play. They got one at home against Auburn. Then they go on the road for back-to-back -back weekends against Arkansas and Kentucky. And then they close out the regular season with a home series against the Tennessee Volunteers. So with all of those series and games bearing in mind, what do the Gamecocks need to do to lock up a top eight national seed? Well, in my opinion, there's a few simple things they need to do. Whatever you do, do not drop the three-game series to the Auburn Tigers. The Auburn Tigers have been scuffling a little bit this season because they lost a lot of talent from the College World Series team this past year, and they are ranked in the bottom half of the SEC standings as far as I know. You do not want to drop a series to that kind of team in your own home ballpark. That would not be a good look to the people who are going to be deciding who the top eight national seats will be. 
You also need to probably try to win either the Arkansas or Kentucky series. Arkansas, I know, has been a little bit banged up in recent weeks. Obviously, hopefully, that their players recover as best as possible. And Kentucky, South Carolina has done pretty well against Kentucky over the past couple of years. And I think that if you're going to pick one of those two series, that's probably the series that you're most likely to win. And the other thing is, just take care of business in the midweek. Basically, do not drop like more than one midweek game. It's already unbelievable to this point that South Carolina's only dropped one this season against, ironically enough, the Charlotte 49ers. So don't let the 49ers get you again, and don't let either North Florida or Winthrop get you in the midweek. And if you can do all of that, I think if you're South Carolina, you are going to very comfortably skate your way into the postseason as a top eight national seed. Now, We've talked about all of that, so let's end the discussion regarding the injury front. Because Mark Kingston talked to Sports Talk Media Network's Phil Kornblut earlier this week regarding a bevy of topics surrounding the team, and one of those topics was injuries. And the Gamecocks, of course, have been pretty banked up over the past couple of weeks as they have lost starters for certain amounts of time, like Will McGillis, Talbaj Lecroy, Noah Hall, and most recently, Gavin Casas. In terms of whether or not these guys can return this weekend or not, Mark Kingston said that he is hopeful that Gavin Casas can return this weekend, but again, seemed to leave it up in the air as to whether or not he will be back in the lineup. Talmadge Lecroy is day-to-day. Obviously, with hamstring issues, you got to be very careful with those because that can go from being a one-week ordeal to a multiple-month scenario where he is not in your lineup if you do not manage the injury correctly. Will McGillis apparently will not be able to play this weekend or is very unlikely. Same deal with Noah Hall. So South Carolina, it looks like, you know, you might get Gavin Casas back in line. You might get Tom Watch Leekroy back. If I have to guess, you're probably only going to get one of these four guys back. And that's probably going to be Gavin Casas back in your lineup. So you might have to go in shorthanded once again against the Auburn Tigers. But again, as we've talked about before, the Gamecocks are one of the deepest teams in the country in terms of who they have on their roster. They've got the numbers and they've got the talent to withstand these injuries at this current moment. And especially this weekend, without diving too deep into Auburn's baseball team as a whole, I think Auburn's baseball team ERA right now is like 6.56. They're one of the worst pitching staffs in the entire conference. So you probably don't really need all of your top guys in the batting lineup to light that team up this upcoming weekend. But it is also SEC baseball, so you never know what can happen. So point being, Gavin Costas seems to be the most likely out of the floor to potentially return to the lineup, which is um, quite miraculous considering the fact that it's a lung issue that he's been dealing with. And the other three guys, it seems pretty questionable or unlikely as to whether or not they're going to be able to play this weekend. So that is sort of the latest on the injury front with Mark Kingston's squad. And with that being said, that is going to do it for today's show of the Locked On Gamecocks podcast. I hope you all thoroughly enjoyed today's show as always. What are your thoughts on this recent reporting on Xavier Leggett? Are you buying stock into him having a potentially breakout season in his final campaign in Columbia? What did you think about the Instagram story video from Jalen Nichols? Do you think that it gives any indication that, again, maybe the injury is not as severe as once thought? Let me know your thoughts on those two discussions and everything else I discussed on today's show down below in the comments section if you watch today's show on YouTube or if you listen to today's show on an audio podcast app, you can shoot me a direct message on Twitter at a lion underscore SC. Be sure to follow the Locked On Gamecocks podcast on Facebook if you are looking for daily information regarding new releases on the Locked On Gamecocks podcast. You can also feel free to subscribe and click the bell on YouTube and give us a follow wherever you get your audio podcast daily. Thank you once again to all of you everydayers of the Locked On Gamecocks podcast. Be sure to tune in to our regularly scheduled programming on Thursday, tomorrow morning. Have a great rest of your Wednesday, and I will catch y'all on the next show of the Locked On Gamecocks podcast.